Hey there, everybody. It is Pastor Josh, and it is Thursday, September 26. My friends, I hope and pray that wherever you are watching or listening to this, um, that you would just... Um, that you would just be in a really good spot and that um, <clears throat> that your day and week are off going well. Friends, I do want to apologize. I'm running a couple minutes late today and yesterday. Um, had to um, deal with some sort of emergency type things for some people in my life. And so I wasn't able to get that devotion out. So I apologize to that. But we are back on track here and we're going to enjoy some time together. Um, friends, as we come together in this spirit of devotion, um, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but this week just seems to have a lot of, of challenges. They're just, you know, I, the, the words or the phrase that comes to mind just seems like there's just kind of something in the air, right? This just talk to a number of people whose, whose weeks just seem like they got a lot of crazy things going on. And by crazy, I just mean like a lot of a lot of things that just seem like they're coming against them and it's like what in the world is going on here and so when i hear that from multiple people you know it kind of makes me wonder you know what 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 exactly is going on that that so many people all at the same time are kind of having to deal with with some of these challenges and trials and tribulations that pop up in their lives so friends let's just take a moment to you know kind of cast aside all of the stuff that has happened so far this week and let us just create a space and a place where, <clears throat> you know, we can just really kind of come to God. We can sit at, at Jesus' feet and we can just allow him to fill us up this morning. And that our focus and our, and our attention would be on the things that he has to say to us this morning. And then we'll jump in and explore our devotion. So a couple quick things before I pray. Um, if you guys have any prayer requests, you know, feel free to, to throw those in the comments. Um, I know that I would love to pray for you. And I know that Sarah would, would also come alongside you in prayer. Um, speaking of Sarah, she is in the process of launching her business. So if you would, would hold her in your prayers, that would be wonderful as she steps out and keeps, keeps working on this, um, on this new business model. And also, we've got um, a couple from one of our churches that was in the hospital last week. So if you just keep them um, in your prayers for, for healing and recovery, we would, we would absolutely love that. So with that, friends, let us take just a moment and, and let's go into prayer before God. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this day that you have given us. And Lord... Um, for a lot of people, it just seems like this has been kind of a crazy week. There's just been a lot of different stuff going on. And, and not that all of it is bad, but it just seems like there's stuff that is coming against us, stuff that is throwing off the our normal routines or, or even those things that are, you know, sort of life-altering and, and challenging for some of us. And so, Lord, <clears throat> help us to cast off the worry the fear, the anxiety, and let us just sit in your presence and let us feel your love and your grace just flow over us. Lord, this morning as we look to spend time in devotion considering some of the scriptures, Lord, we just pray as always that you would open our hearts, ears, and minds and that we would you know, hear the wisdom and truth that you desire to speak for us and that we might consider, you know, how how we can live out, how we grow in our faith and how we can live out some of the things that we are learning in these devotions in a new and, and different expression. So Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends. Well, Today, we are going to be starting chapter 7 of the Gospel of Mark, and I've got kind of a long passage today, but in the Bible I'm using this morning, um, the subheading is called Clean and Unclean, and we're going to read like the first 20, um, 23 verses 1 through 23 this morning. So if you got your Bible, follow along. I am going to read kind of fast just because it's so long, but as always, I encourage you to you know really take some time and, and go back and, and reflect on this and consider how you know God might... Um, be speaking to you through different parts. 
So it says the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they are giving their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So Jesus and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites as it is written. The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have to let go of the commands of God. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me, it is Corban, that is, a gift devoted to God. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your own tradition and you have handed down, that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside of man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, that is what comes out of man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach and then out of his body. In this saying... Jesus declared that all foods were clean. He went on, What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. From, for, from within, <clears throat> for from within, out of men's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make man unclean. All right. Well, friends, this is this is a I think, although it it deals with something contextually that that many of us don't even bother to consider um, anymore. I think there's still a real relevance to what's being said here because Jesus is talking again about the state of our heart versus the mere adherence to a, a list of of regulations, rules, or traditions. Okay, and so. Obviously, friends, we know that as we study and explore the scriptures that um, the Israelites and the Jewish people did have a large number of of rituals and things that they did. They believed that, you know, that many of these were indeed handed down by God and that they needed to live up to these, right? And so in this instance, right, um, some of the religious leaders from, from the Pharisees come to Jesus and say, look, how come your disciples, right? You're, you're a rabbi and you have disciples. And why is it that your, your own disciples aren't following some of these rituals, some of these rules and some of these traditions? And, and Jesus gets a little bit feisty here and he says, well, look, guys, it's not what goes into your body that makes you unclean, right? Some of these rules that, that deal with purity and, and clean versus unclean, right? when you focus solely on those and and you do those to live out or to to bring forth the law um with you know like the the dotting of an i or crossing a tree right you're 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 talking about the 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 letter of the law versus the spirit of the law you've sort of missed this and so jesus oftentimes takes the law because he's he is a Jewish person. He does observe this. It, the law for him is very important. At, at a different point, he'll say, look, I haven't come to nullify the law, but I've come to fulfill it, right? Not a single letter, not a single dot will be taken out of the law, but rather I will confirm all of it, right? And so <clears throat> um, this is a really interesting and challenging teaching because he says, look, guys, 
you've created this long list of rules and regulations and while on the outside they appear to be really good, right? They, they appear to show a certain reverence for God in the doing of these things. But when people don't do them, you clamp down so hard on them that you're actually missing out on, on, on the spirit of the law, right? And so then Jesus uses this example of honoring the father and mother and saying, well, look, you know, you, you, you tell people that they can do something and you sort of um, give them the opportunity to not actually honor their father and mother because you, you say that they have to follow all these other rules and that if you just give them something like this, that that's a gift from God and therefore you, you're not responsible to take care and to honor your father and mother. And he says there's lots of times, lots of examples, you know, where we do this. And friends, I want to say that even today, you know, we might we might not have all of the food and, and hand washing um, purity rituals that the Jewish people had, but we can still get caught up in um, some of the rules, regulations, and traditions that we have, even within our own churches, right? And we can we can make certain things appear as if they're the most important, most paramount thing. And if you don't you don't do these things, then you've missed the boat, so to speak. Now, friends, I do, before I go into maybe an illustration or an example of this, I want to say that this is, you know, this is something we constantly have to live out, right? So so often in our lives, we want things to just be A plus B equals C, right? Just this real simple, convenient method. But But there's a real wrestling that has to go on because, you know, as I read some of these scriptures... And, and you look again, especially throughout the Old Testament, some of these rituals and things that they did, some of the, the clean versus unclean foods and different things, like they make sense in the way that they would keep a, a people healthy, okay? And, and so there's also this idea that there's this reverence to God in this, like, look, we're originally this ritual or this distinction was made out of the reverence of God, and that's a good thing. And yet at the same time, there's also this thing where we say, well, if we elevate this to such a level, then it's like putting this big yoke, this big burden on people, and people start doing rules just for the sake of doing rules, and eventually it just wears them down and wears them out, and and they actually miss out on the life-giving aspects of of what God is doing and what what. God offers them because this the, the life in, in vitality is just being sucked out of them. So again, friends, this is there there's a wrestling that goes into this, and this is why, especially in places like church or, or just faith communities, you know, there has to be sort of this consensus as we work this out together to make sure that that one we're we are holding on to some of the important rituals and traditions that we have. But we also have to make sure that they just don't become some, you know, um, worthless thing that we just do by rote, you know. So let me give you an example of something because this is a like this is a major, major thing for many churches, right? So in many churches, we we will say something like the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father, depending on your tradition, right? And I have been in churches where. If you don't say that prayer, that like that, that causes major offense, right? Like, why didn't we say the Lord's prayer today? And on the one hand, I understand that it's a it's a beautiful prayer. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. And I also believe that so many of us we we say that prayer so often that it becomes part of our normal routine, and there's a certain familiarity, a, a certain assurance that 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 constant praying of that prayer gives for us. But here's the other side of the coin. If you're just saying the words and you're not actually really considering and, and actually praying, you know, some of the petitions, what's the point, right? Because the point of that prayer is to one, again, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? Like, what does that mean? Do you come? Are you coming in this very moment? Are you coming on your knees or, or whatever? I use that just as a, an example, but are you coming on your knees and sitting before God, this holy God, who's also 
your father, right? It's, it's basically Jesus says, look, you can call God daddy, right? Abba father. Think about that relationship. Do you see God as your father, right? Or, or do you just see him as this high lofty figure that, that's out there, but and you're just paying lip service to that God, hoping to invoke some benefit for yourself? Or are you actually coming in and, and, and looking to experience a father-type relationship with the best father in all of existence, right? A father that might transcend even the, the broken and hurtful relationships you might have with, a, or with an earthly father. You know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Like, what does that mean? How do you get to live that out? Or are you saying that that prayer just as a simple wish saying, you know what, I, I want your will to be done. You go ahead and you take care of everything, right? Bring, your, bring, bring heaven down to earth and fix this place that seems like it's spinning rapidly and wildly out of control. But friends, there's an invitation in that petition to say, no, Lord, I, want, I do desire, I, I want your will to be done and I want heaven to come down to earth in this manner of speaking and how do I get to live that out? How, how are you working within me to, to, to be equipped to go out and, and to live into the kingdom that your son Jesus ushered in when he came to earth? And how do I invite other people to be a part of that and experience the abundant life that's available for people in the kingdom? So friends, these are things that we, we really need to consider. And, and again, it's one of those things where I feel like we, we oftentimes have to step back and we have to look at our heart's intention, right? And this is kind of how Jesus ends the thing because he says, look, it's not the things that go into your body, right? If you're a Jew and you eat pork, right? That's not really what makes you unclean, but it's what comes out of the heart because it's your heart that, that you know, often lead you to think certain ways, to speak certain ways, to do certain things. And if your heart's not right, then you've kind of missed the point. You're not actually living out the spirit of the law because your your heart's not in your worship. Your heart's not in the rituals or the traditions that you're doing because you've just made it a checklist. And if you are able to check off all of the things on that list, then you can consider yourself successful, even if you didn't really mean or even desire to do those things as worship to God. So friends, this is this is an interesting place and, and there are no, again, I don't think there's a definitive answer that I can give you that again, A plus B equals C. This is something that we need to wrestle with both in our personal lives and in our corporate lives of faith as we seek to, to follow God. So friends, my prayer for you today is that you would just you know, continue to allow your your heart, your mind, body, and spirit to continually be transformed by the love and grace of Jesus Christ and that you would live out the law, that you would live into the rituals and traditions that you have it set up in your personal life and in your churches and, and live them out because you're desiring to worship, not just simply because you're trying to be a good person or you're trying to check off the boxes on a checklist. Because friends... I really believe that God desires our true hearts. He desires to be in relationship with us. And so friends, you know, if God calls you to pray a prayer other than the Lord's prayer that day, I want to encourage you to do it. And if God calls you to pray the Lord's prayer, then I want you to sit and meditate on the petitions and the words that you are praying as you go through there, allowing the Holy Spirit to work and to guide you and to highlight those words saying, yes, yes, this is good, go Go and focus on this. All right, my friends. Well, it was good to be back with you. Um, we will be back again tomorrow morning uh, to finish off the week at 8 a.m. Blessings on your day. As always, if there's anything I can do to pray with you or listen or come alongside you, um, please reach out and um, we would love to hear from you. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye.